So the next speaker is uh, Dr. Jin Song Li, is a prominent scientist from China and has had uh, training at La Rockefeller University. Uh, so he's, uh, he's got ties to New York. Um, he's going to talk to us about artificial sperm uh, generation applications and he's widely published in, in top journal Nature Science. We're looking forward to your presentation. Thank you for kind introduction. Uh, it's my, actually, it's my great pleasure to be here. First of all, I would like to thank the meeting organizers, especially Dr. Zhang, for inviting me. Today, I would like to uh, talk about uh, uh, our recent work on the artificial sperm. So, why artificial sperm? As all of you know, sperm can fertilize outside to start a new life. Therefore, we can image if we can genetically manipulate sperm in vitro, we may produce gene-modified animals in one step. However, sperm are structurally a uh, uh, specialized cell. This cell cannot be genetically manipulated in vitro. Therefore, we ask whether we can generate a haploid cell line that can be used in place of sperm to uh, uh, produce animals. If yes, we may do gene modification in this cultured cells in vitro, then by injection of these cells into outside to produce gene mo modified animals in one step. So the question, the next question is how to derive a haploid cells, right? Actually, haploid cells just uh, exist in very low organisms such as fungi and, uh, and uh, fern. As all of you know, yeast is a kind of fungi that has been largely used in many uh, labs, actually. As an example, as all of you know, the Nobel Prize in this year has been awarded to Dr. Uh, Oshami. Oh, I'm sorry. How to go back? Yeah. Uh, for, for his discovery uh, of mechanism of, of autophagy. Actually, he used the yeast as as the model system for his studies. So the next question is, can, can we derive haploid cells from other organisms? Actually, this is an open question for, for a long time. Uh, in 2009, a group from Singapore reported the generation of haploid cells from Madaka fish. This study indicated that if technical is feasible, available, we may produce haploid cell lines from other organisms, even from mammals. However, from this picture, we can see the only haploid cells in mammals are gametes, including uh, oocyte and sperm. But uh, both oocyte and, and sperm are structurally specialized cells, right? These cells cannot divide in vitro. So the next question is, how can we derive a cell line from these non-dividing cells? Actually, there is one strategy can, can do this. That is, produce haploid embryos stem cells from haploid embryos. There are, from this reference, you can see actually uh, in 1970s, many labs worked on how to uh, generate mouse haploid embryos. There are two kinds of haploid embryos. The first one is uh, angiogenetic haploid embryo. The other one is parthenogenetic haploid embryo. To generate Angiogenetic haploid embryo, we can remove the female pronucleus from zygote. The resulting embryo containing only genome from sperm can develop to blast stage in vitro. We call this embryo angiogenetic haploid embryos. Similarly, if you remove female of male pronucleus from zygote, the resulting embryo could develop to parthenogenetic blast system. So the next question can we? derive haploid embryo stem cells from these haploid embryos. Actually, this is also a, an open question for more than maybe 40 years. Uh, in, in 1981, as all of you know, the, uh, 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 Evans and the Kaufman uh, generated the first embryo stem cells from, from, from mouse. This work has, has been awarded for Nobel Prize in 2007. Shortly after that, the same group tried to uh, establish haploid embryo stem cells from haploid embryos. 
they did made four cell lines. However, kilotyping analysis indicated that all these four cell lines are diploid. So this study indicated that haploid spontaneously converted into diploids during the cell culturing and the cell proliferation. So actually, these are very classical studies has been uh, written in, in many textbooks. When I was a post, uh, when I was a graduate student, student I actually I, I, I knew these studies. In my mind, I, I always think it is impossible to generate a haploid cell lines from these haploid embryos because all these cells convert into diploid during cell culturing. However, actually, impossible is nothing. Right? This is a very famous advertisement from Adidas. Especially, I think, in biological field, impossible is nothing. Uh, in 2011, two, group, two groups independently uh, reported the generation of haploid from personal genetic embryos. They activate mature oocyte in which to produce personal genetic, to produce haploid personal genetic embryos from these embryos they generated haploid embryon stem cells. After you carefully going through uh, these two papers, by comparing these two papers to, uh, with, with the paper published in 1983, you can see that the only difference between these two, uh, uh, between uh, 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 these two studies uh, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, 1983 study, the only difference is that application of cell sorting technology. Actually, haploid spontaneously convert into diploid during cell culturing. The only way to keep haploid in vitro is by regular cell sorting. Actually, cell sorting is not a novel technology, right? Yes, yes, cell derivation is not uh, novel either. So, but I think the combination of these t two technologies are totally uh, novel. However, actually, these cells are from uh, 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 personal genetic haploid embryo, which were derived from outside, which means these cells contain, maintain typical maternal epigenetic patterns. Therefore, if you inject these haploid cells into outside to, to produce a diploid embryo, actually, these diploid embryos are personal genetic deploy embryos that cannot develop to term in vivo, right? Actually, we, we, we tested this by generating two haploid from personal genetic, embryos, uh, personal genetic embryos. By injecting these cells into outside, we found all injected outside could not develop to term in vivo. Then we asked, it is possible to generate haploid embryos from angiogenetic embryos that were produced from sperm. In uh, 2012, we reported the generation of haploid cells from angiogenetic embryo, which, which were derived from uh, a sperm. We, we actually, we, we, remove, we performed the nuclear transfer first. By, we, we first removed the, the, the uh, uh, spindle chromosome complex from outside. Then we inject a, a sperm head into this in, inucleated oocyte to produce a haploid uh, embryos containing only genome from sperm. From these embryos, we can produce, we can generate haploid embryon stem cell lines. Interesting, by injection of these haploid cells into oocyte, a live pulps could be generated at actually very really low efficiency. We call this mice semi cloned mice because only half of the genome of these mice were from donor cells, comparing to cloned animals in which 100% of don uh, genome are from donor cells. Uh, actually, we call this technology uh, uh, semi-cloned technology. Excuse me, sir, can you help me to play this movie? No, it doesn't work. You should use the, can you, if not, it's okay. I just want, to, oh yeah, it, it works. Yeah, it's a, a beautiful mature oocyte, right? It's just like ICSI technology. We just pick up a haploid in place of sperm, then inject this haploid into this mature oocyte. 
it's actually very easy to all of you, right? To produce a semi-cloned embryo. So this is this technology actually is not so difficult. You use a piano machine? Yes. Uh, so actually, in this study, we 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 we, we produce a new concept that we we, we can generate cultural sperm uh, by by nuclear transfer technology. However, the efficiency is very low. So it, it is just that concept it cannot become a tool because the low efficiency. So. So in the next few years, we try to improve the, we try to stabilize and improve the, the fertilization ability of our haploceres. Uh, because in, in our previous study, we found uh, almost half of uh, pro produced uh, uh, semi-cloned mice exhibit closely retarded phenotype. And uh, we, we also uh, observed that in all these uh, closely retarded pups, the Expression of H19 was over, over, over expressed in, in all these uh, closely targeted pups. As all of you know, H19 is a paternal imprint in the gene that, that was not expressed in, in sperm. However, in our hair process, H19 expression is, is, is very high. Uh, similarly, in all these closely targeted pups, uh, H19 was over expression. So, uh, in, uh, consistently, uh, the, the H19 DMR region, which, control, which, which controls the H19 expression, uh, uh, was a lost DNA methylation. So we propose if we decrease the expression level in our hepro cells, these cells may, uh, we may support efficient, efficient regeneration of, of semi mice. So how to decrease the H19 expression actually is, is not, not very difficult. We, we can just uh, remove H19 DMR region in our hepatocytes. We actually we, about, we, we got the mice uh, carried H19 DMR dilution from Dr. Manisha's lab. And uh, using hep, uh, sperms from these mice, we generated, we generated three cells carrying H19 DMR deletion. By injection these cells into outside, we found uh, the, the, the birth rate of semi mice was about 6% of transferred embryo, which is three times higher than, 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 than white type cells. Interesting, we still found almost 3% uh, of transferred embryo developed to closely retarded pup, which means except H19 uh, uh, effect, there is another very there is another one or another two uh, uh, factors that are very important for 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 closely retarded pup, uh, closely retarded phenotype of this semi mice. So, what is the next uh, factor? Actually, except H19, that is very really uh, famous uh, paternal imprinted gene. The other one very famous paternal imprinted gene is GTL2. So we obviously we, we check the GTL2 expression in our hepro cells and also in our uh, closely tarted pups. We found all these closely tarted pups exhibit a GTL2 O expression. And uh, the region controls GTL2 expression, that is IGDMR region, lost DNA methylation. So we further propose if we decrease GTL2 expression in our hepro cells, that these cells, uh, uh, by, by actually by removing uh, IgDMR, the, the resulting uh, hepro cells carrying both H19 and IgDMR deletion could further support the generation of semi mice. Then we, we use the uh, uh, CRISPR-Cas9 technology to remove uh, IgDMR in, in H19 DMR deleted hepro cells to produce double knockout hepro cells. By injection, this, by injection of this DKO hepro cells into outside, we can find the birth rate of semi mice was 22.4% uh, percent of transferred embryo. That was 10 times higher than white type uh, hepro cells. Importantly, 
there's almost no closely retarded pulp uh, producing in this, from this kind of, this type of haploid cells. So actually 22% of transport embryo is quite high to be a genetic tool. So what can, I, can we do uh, uh, using these haploid cells for genetic an analysis? First, first of thing, that, that is we can do actually multiple gene uh, modi modi uh, mutation in our haploid cells. We mutant uh, TET family genes, TET123, in our haploid cells. By injection of these haploid cells into outside, we can efficiently produce uh, heterozygous mice carrying TET123 mutations. Similarly, we also mutant P15-3, 53 families in, in our haploid cells and produce uh, heterozygous mutant mice in one step at a very high efficiency. Uh, secondly, we can do actually multiple gene knock-in in our haploid cells. We, uh, we, we produce haploid cells carrying TET123 knock-in genes and uh, by injection of these cells into outside, we can efficiently produce uh, mice carrying three knock-in genes. So what is next? Actually, in 2013, several groups reported the, 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 the application of CRISPR-Cas9 technology for whole genome screen at the cellular level. At the cellular level, so we 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 propose because our haploid cells also are, are cell line, right? So we 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 think we our haploid cells might be feasible for uh, CRISPR-Cas9 mediated genome-wide uh, 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 screen, right? And then by injection of our haploid cells into outside, our haploid cells mediated semi-clone technology may be used for genetic screen at organism level in mammals. That is, cannot be done. This technology actually is not feasible in mammals at this time, right? So we test this by doing the next, the following experiments. First, the, we, we transferred a single guide on library in our haploid cells to produce a haploid cells carrying single guide on library by optimizing the, the transfection conditions we can make a haploid cells carry uh, in which most of the haploid cells carried only one single guide on it right then we transcendently transfect transfected cas9 into our haploid cells to produce a mutant haploid cell pool, right? Each, each haploid cell carries one mutant gene. Then by injection this haploid, actually these haploid cells are sperm, right? Artificial sperms. By injection this haploid cells in the outside, we can produce mutant mice in one step. And all these mutant mice carry different mutations, right? So you may ask, how do you know this, uh, each mice carry the, what, what kind of mutant gene, right? Actually, it's, it is not difficult because each haploid cell is a single guide on a transgenic haploid cell. By injecting this transgenic haploid cell into outside, we can produce actually a transgenic, a single guide on transgenic mice, right? So we can just do PCR and also sequence to, know, to, to see what single guide on gene was trans, uh, carried by this mutant by these mice, then by DNA sequence, we can know whether this gene was mutant or not in these mice. Actually, uh, we, we did this experiment by uh, uh, produce uh, 580 uh, semiconductor embryos. After transplant list of these embryos into ut uterus of pseudo-pregnant females, we produce 114 mice in which 82 mice carried only one single guide RNA. By PCR and also DNA sequence analysis, we found 43 mice carried mutant gene, which means we produce 43 mutant mice in one step. But at least all these mice are, are heterozygous, heterozygous mutant mice because only haploid cells carried mutant gene. So we next asked, can we produce biallelic mutant mice in one step? So to answer this question, firstly, we, we, tra we, 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 we transfect 
our hair process with lengthy Cas9 uh, uh, virus to produce a hair process constitutively expressed Cas9. Then we transfect single guideline library into our this hair process to produce a hair process like uh, carrying both Cas both Cas9 and the single guideline expressed uh, 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 transgene. Then by injection this hair process into outside. We do have a lot of chance to produce bioelectric mutant mice in one step. So we, in total, we produce uh, 1,453 embryos and produce 272 uh, 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 semicolon mice, in which uh, 237 mice carried only one single guideline. Uh, from this 237, uh, mice, we found 80, 83 mice carried by allelic mutant, uh, mutant gene, which means we can produce, we can produce uh, by allelic mutant mice uh, carried different mutations in one step. So take a home message, our hyperocellular mediated semiconductor the technology provide a, a new genetic tools that is enabling uh, genetic screen in mice. So next we, we want to know what is the difference between the haplocytes from outside and, the, and from sperm. As I just showed you, uh, outside uh, 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 orange-genetic haplocytes could not support full development after injection into outside. So we, we, we wonder what is the difference between these two kind of uh, uh, haplocytes. Interesting. From RNA-seq analysis, we found that actually there is no difference between these two types of haplocytes based on whole genome genes and, uh, and also based on whole uh, 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 imprinted gene. So we, we propose if we remove H19 DMR and IG DMR in our haplocytes derived from outside, these cells carried double knockout may also support semicolon mice generation by injection into outside, which uh, that is just like a uh, process from sperm. So we did this experiment by, by, by using CRISPR-Cas9 technology to remove H19 DMR and, and IG DMR in our process from outside. Then by injection this DKO process into outside, we found 15.5 of transferred embryos could develop to term in vivo. This study actually show you uh, uh, in mouse kingdom, actually there is no, uh, actually sperm is not necessary for reproduction. <laughs> so we can produce a, a, a female mouse kingdom uh, by our semiconductor clone technology. So actually we, we also try to answer whether high process could be derived from higher uh, mammals. We, we produce high process from Madaka fish uh, 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 macaca, fisculus, uh, 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 outside by active by in which activation of this outside we, we generated a personal genetic uh, plus sister from this plus, plus sisters we produced two haplocellulites. Uh, finally, we we asked whether we can produce haplocells from human, actually from human outside, uh, from human personal genetic. Embryos produced by remove, uh, I'm sorry, by remove uh, 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 male pronucleus from zygote, we generated two haplocells from from human. Uh, actually, all uh, haplocells generated from my lab was uh, are, are available in, in 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 the stem cell bank of our institute. So it's free for all of you. So if you want, just let me know. Uh, so take a home message here is that is we, we, we generate the process from, from mouse, from monkey, and also from human. We also generate the artificial sperm from, from uh, uh, both sperm and the, and the outside in mice. Actually, we do have many questions to answer in the near future, such as can monkey uh, angiogenetic haplocells be generated? And uh, how to stabilize uh, stabilize haploid in which actually uh, uh, today we have to do uh, cell sorting 
regularly to, to maintain haploidy in vitro. So uh, if we can stably uh, maintain haploidy in vitro, th this technology will be more easier to use in, in future. And uh, also, what is the underlying mechanism of, of high efficient generation of semiclonal mice uh, uh, by our DKO haploid cells? Finally, I would like to thank all the members in our lab, especially uh, uh, for Hui Yang, who generated the first haploid cells in the lab, and uh, Yu Xuan Wu, who produced, uh, who established the CRISPR Cas9 technology in the lab, and uh, Zhong Cui Qin, uh, who, uh, uh, who, who many, man, many performed DKO uh, uh, experiments, also generated haploid cells from, from, from human. I also would like to thank the, all the, uh, <coughs> sorry, all, all the, the uh, collaborators. Uh, without their, their help, we cannot make all these studies and also fund, funding agencies for giving us money. Finally, I also would like to thank MICE. Without MICE, we cannot do anything. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.